and the fourth uh, uh, source of nutriment is called uh, consciousness. Consciousness as food. First of all, our individual consciousness. Each of us has our individual consciousness, mental consciousness, and store consciousness. In our store consciousness, there may be a dark spot. Maybe we have been uh, abused as a child in the past. We have suffered quite a lot as uh, a child. And the memories of suffering are still there, very vivid. And it is in that corner of our uh, store consciousness. And also that kind of suffering may have been transmitted to us by our parents, our ancestors. And many of us uh, have the habit of uh, going back to the past and suffer again and again the suffering of the past. We don't follow the teaching of the Buddha that the past is already gone. We should be able to enjoy the wonders of life in the present moment. But many of us cannot do that because the past has become a kind of prison. We are caught. And we go back always to the past and relieve again and again the suffering of the past. There are films of the past projected in that dark corner. And we go back day and night and watch the film of suffering in the past. We need someone, like a teacher or a friend, to try to take us out of that dark corner of our consciousness. There are animals like cows and buffaloes, after they have eaten grass, they swallow. They have so many, many stomachs. They chew, they swallow, and then they bring it out again, and, and they, they chew again. So we do exactly like that. We swallow, swallow our suffering, and we bring it up again, and we swallow again and again. And that is not good food not uh, consciousness as, as food. The materials in our in individual consciousness should uh, be recognized and transformed and should not continue to be a source of nutriment for us. And as a practitioner, we have to be aware of that. We should stop consuming the past, consuming the suffering of the past. We should try to be in the here and the now, uh, profit from the light, from the beauty of uh, the cosmos, of the earth, to nourish us, to help us strong in order to transform, eliminate that corner, that corner in our consciousness. You need uh, a friend, a teacher, a sangha, maybe a psychotherapist to help you to get out of that prison and learn to live uh, deeply in the present moment to heal. And then there is the collective uh, consciousness. Collective consciousness can be very wholesome like uh, when we come to a retreat like this, 
and 1,300 people breathing together, smiling together, working together. We produce a very handsome, a wholesome energy of peace and joy. And that is a very good uh, nutriment, very good food. Last year, while uh, giving a Dhamma talk in northern Germany, I saw four young mothers sitting in the front row and nursing their babies. Of course, the baby did not understand the talk. <laughs> but they inherited, they benefited from a peaceful, loving atmosphere in the home. They were receiving two kinds of food at the same time, the milk from the mother's breast and the atmosphere of peace and brotherhood and sisterhood generated by the practice in the home. So as a Sangha, we can, we can produce that kind of uh, collective, wholesome energy of peace and compassion that can help to heal and to transform. That is why building a Sangha is a very noble thing to do. After the retreat, maybe you would like to go home with the intention, volition, to build a Sangha. To do walking, sitting, breathing, to generate that collective uh, energy of peace and brotherhood. And many people in the neighborhood can come and inherit from that. But there are neighborhoods who are full of anger and fear and hate. And the collective uh, energy of anger and despair is so destructive. If you happen to spend a few days in that neighborhood, you feel, you feel that you suffer. And if you happen to settle in that neighborhood, you should know that you have to pull out as quickly as possible. Otherwise, you will be like them, thinking, acting in a hateful way, in a violent way, and your children will do that. It's not because we want to abandon the suffering people. We, we have to take care of ourselves first. We have to pull out and heal ourselves. And if we can go back in strength, as a Sangha, we can help that neighborhood to transform. You know, the collective, a collective uh, energy of uh, hate, of anger, of fear, is very destructive. It leads to killing. It leads to committing suicide. On the day, on the day of September 11th, I was in America on a speaking tour. We had to offer uh, retreats and Dhamma talks. And I felt that collective energy of anger and fear in America. It's just so, so dangerous. So the first uh, public talk I gave was uh, three days after, after September 11 in Berkeley. 4,000 people attended. And uh, as uh, I asked uh, all, the monas uh, all members of the monastic Sangha to join me and help the crowd to practice coming because uh, the feeling of anger and fear is so overwhelming. We practice uh, breathing, calm. We know that uh, acting, reacting with that kind of consciousness, uh, uh, collective consciousness of fear and anger is very dangerous. And a number of days later, I gave uh, another talk of the Riverside Church in New York City and, and encouraged people to practice the same kind of practice coming down. 
when I board the plane to go to another city, I could feel the anger and the fear of everyone sitting in the plane. And the pilot tried to say something to cheer people up, but uh, he, he did not succeed. And that is why we should not uh, allow ourselves to consume that collective energy of, uh, of fear, anger, and despair. It's not good for our health, and not good for the health of our children. If that neighborhood produces so much hate, and despair, and anger, we should not continue to be there, because if we do, it will be like them very quickly, our children also. That is why we have to learn to protect ourselves and try our best to come back to help when we are stronger. This is the four kinds of nutrients that the Buddha uh, ta- uh, spoke about. And uh, I have a friend who, uh, who is uh, in the faculty of the Department of Nutrition in Harvard University. She wrote a book, uh, Saver, on uh, eating, mindful eating. And I advise her to print uh, the text, the whole text of the Sutra inside. Mindful consumption is the way out. And this is a national problem. It's a world problem, not only a family problem.